Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Ave Maria Press Professional Development Webinar Series. In this webinar, Colleen Reese Vermeulen will guide you through the practical tips for brainstorming and implementing One Parish, One Book initiatives. My name is Erin Pierce. I am the publicist at Ave Maria Press. Everyone in the audience is muted today, but you are able to ask questions. Questions can be sent to our presenter using the question section of the GoToWebinar panel that you see here on the slide. And I'll read as many of these as possible at the end of the presentation today. This webinar is being recorded and I will send you a link to the recording via email tomorrow, which you are free to and welcome to share with all of your friends or um, colleagues. With that, I would like to welcome and introduce our presenter today. Colleen Reese from Ulan is co-founder of CatholicBiblicalSchool.org and a teacher and director with the Catholic Biblical School of Michigan, an adult faith formation ministry. After receiving her undergraduate degree from Cornell University, Vermeulen served on active duty in the U.S. Army. He earned a Master of Divinity and a Master of Nonprofit Administration degrees from the University of Notre Dame. A contributing writer to the Living the Word Catholic Women's Bible, Colleen Vermeulen has taught children and adults the Bible for many years and served in parish, catechetical, young adult, music, and evangelization ministries. An officer in the U.S. Army Reserve, she lives with her family in southeastern Michigan. Colleen, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much, Erin. Absolutely. I'm going to go ahead and make you presenter. Okay, are you seeing the slides? Yes, I am seeing the slides. You can take it from here. Fantastic. So welcome everyone. Um, the real kind of the cause behind this particular webinar topic is as all of us who have volunteered or worked in parish life know, we're, we're always trying to figure out how can we reach people? You know, how can we reach people? How can we teach them the faith? How can we inspire them? And books kind of seem old fashioned, right? Like we have so many new technologies, we have streaming videos, all these different things. But books can be a tremendously valuable way because they are so flexible and so concrete. They give people a way to connect with their faith and learn something and get to know one another as a community. So as a kind of a quick starting point, if you're here and you're watching this and you're not a parish leader or not a key volunteer in a parish, that's okay. You can substitute, you can think one school, one book, you can think one deanery or one diocese or one, you know, one women's ministry and one book. So whatever the group of people that you have taken on that, that role of evangelizing and providing catechetical leadership for, this can apply to. Okay. So you might think, hey, one book, this should be a librarian giving this talk. I'm not a librarian, but here's what brings me here. So like so many people, I grew up Catholic, but um, didn't really have much of a connection between the faith in the parish and went on for me kind of in my ordinary life. After graduating college, I served on active duty in the US Army. Um, after that, settled down to start a family. and. In that time period, over a little more than the past decade, I've ministered in many, many roles in parishes from helping with Alpha and young adults, children's ministry and adult faith formation. And so the reason I'm here to talk about this is because I represent kind of that elusive parishioner who's really, really busy, has kids going all different directions and doesn't necessarily find an obvious way to fit into kind of traditional parish catechetical offerings for adults that are often pinned to a particular date and time. On top of that, I can very honestly share, my husband and I, we're, we're kind of both natural introverts. So yeah, you know, we're those people who've been coming to coffee and donuts at your parish for over a decade come to coffee and donuts, love the donuts, but 
we kind of just make small talk. You know, we haven't really grown deeper spiritually with other people in our parish through things like coffee and donuts. You know, it doesn't just come naturally. So this flows out of that reality, which is true for so many people, not just us. Okay. So the first thing we're going to think about is kind of just recapturing our dreams for catechesis and the unity that we want in our parish or in our Catholic school or whatever the setting is. Because, you know, the church puts some really big inspiring ideas out there, but then sometimes over time, our dreams get a little bit dampened down into, you know, well, the mundane and what can we do and what usually do. We, what do we usually do? So let's kind of go to that big picture. You know, the church teaches really ardently about the importance of lifelong catechesis. So we're, when we're thinking about adults, we're not just thinking of like an optional add-on, you know, take care of the kids, don't worry about the adults, but no, but adults need a way to be constantly nourished. So it's not just about that initial conversion, but what goes on throughout the rest of their life, you know, enabling people to enter into the mystery of who God is and what God is doing in the world as they enter new situations as adults. So that's why adult catechesis is important. Now, this comes from some um, research that was funded by America Magazine, partnership with CARA, that they surveyed representative adult Catholics, so across the country, across different age groups. And roughly 23% of adult Catholics are doing something to practice their faith outside of Mass. And when we think about kids, it's about the same. About 22% of parents have their children involved in particular offerings at, at the parish. So the really big thing to take away from this is, wow, there's a lot of room to grow. We are not engaging, you know, every Catholic who considers themselves a part of our parish. There's, there's quite a lot of space to go. And if you think about stuff that's gone on in your, in your parish to, to catechize, to really share and help deepen that lifelong adult faith, Oftentimes, we see that same one fourth of people showing up, right? So, you know, I've been in parish catechesis and man, I kind of rack my brain thinking, okay, what if I did it on Friday morning with some childcare and Tuesday afternoon and then repeated it on Wednesday evening? At the end of the day, it's a lot of the same people. So, there's a huge opportunity for our creativity and our desire to think outside the box and start to reach into those people who are not currently engaged, who don't find what we currently do convenient. Now, in addition, you know, to thinking about, um, hey, can I schedule something at different times of the week? Uh, I'll own this because I've been in parish ministry. Another thing that we often do when we think about how can we help grow the lifelong faith of more adults in our parish is we just keep growing the menu. You know what I mean? So it, we, we think, okay, we need to have a small group that meets talking about this. We need to have a group that meets talking about topic B and then maybe C. And maybe if we add D, E, F, we'll get more people. But this, while this can produce fruit and certainly does, there are some costs to it. So number one, it, it kind of becomes um, a situation of diminishing returns, right? Because we keep dipping into that same quarter of people who wants to come to a group that meets in the parish. Uh, we keep kind of those people same, just keep coming to the same things. So we're not engaging those new people. The other thing that can happen over time is that Having so many different groups, just a bigger and bigger and bigger menu of different catechetical topics can almost create silos in the parish. So you might have experienced this, being in a place where, hey, the people who always choose such and such Bible study, they never end up interacting with the people who are, you know, doing that small group study of the liturgy. And, you know, those people, well, they never overlap with the parents of preschoolers because they're not available at that time. So if we simply grow the menu, 
over time we can realize that like, wow, we have a very fractured parish that there's a lot of people who never interact with other people in the parish um, in, a, in an area of faith, right? It's just saying hi at mass. It's just saying hi at coffee and donuts. There's different groups of people who don't get a chance to interact when it comes to their faith. And that same study about adult Catholics um, also shows that roughly 36% of Catholics say that it's challenging to find a time that works for them for doing faith formation. And that's the biggest challenge that people report is finding time. Interestingly, this challenge of time, it does change over the course of our various seasons and decades of life. So as you might guess, the people who have the least amount of challenge finding time, you know, it drops to like only only 27% think it's a challenge to find time, is in our oldest parishioners, our oldest participants. And then as you work your way down through the age groups, the younger you are, the more you find it a challenge to find a time that works to come to group faith formation. Another kind of impulse, inspiration of the church is that our catechetical programs that we do in parishes, they're, they're actually supposed to overlap. You know, they're not supposed to be in separate compartments. And again, as we kind of constantly multiply our ministries to try to serve everybody, sometimes we do end up making compartments. So again, as we think about how we respond to these realities, that the church has a wonderful vision for lifelong faith formation, and at the same time, wants what we do in parish life to, to be very integrated, very coherent. You know, one thing that is often very, very tempting is to just increase the menu so that we're putting more and more stuff out there. But we're not necessarily growing the number of people who are participating. So One Parish, One Book is an invitation to think about what if we just did one thing and instead of doing more different things, thought about how can we have more different ways to draw people into that thing, to help them engage with it, to help them engage with others. So that's kind of the, the backdrop. And if you think about the nature of a book, you think about it on your own right now, there's a lot of different ways you can have a touch point with a book. It can be as an individual, it can be in conversations with others, it can be through study guides, it can be through sharing your own reflections, and we're gonna talk about this more later, but a, a book is something that there are many, many different ways to engage with, many different ways for different people to pick up a book and find value in it, to use it. Okay, so next step. So let's think about this genre, this idea of community reading programs. I'm sure many of us have heard of them, right? Our large public libraries do things like the big read. We sometimes have like one city or one county, one book programs. Sometimes colleges or universities will pick a book for um, all incoming students to read, right? So we see that in the broader secular world, the idea of unifying people around a book is definitely out there and, and it's having a lot of success. Otherwise, the org these organizations wouldn't keep doing it. And so I think kind of the keys of why do community reading programs even exist is books provide both concreteness and then reading a book as a community provides permission for people to go deeper with one another. And all of these different groups who often do community reading that, that we hear about, they do it because they're really honing in on this idea of the power of a shared reading experience. And you can take out reading, right? Just think of the power of a shared experience. Shared experience is what enables us as individuals in a parish community and a school community to form bonds with one another. And that's kind of what can be really hard in Catholic parishes. And it's not because we don't try, right? So just a, a reality check. Um, the average, average Catholic parish in the United States has uh, over 1,100 households. 
So that is a lot of people. And the average size of parishes is actually increasing. So it's getting larger and larger. And if you think about a group of people that large, so many diverse schedules, so many personality types of how people um, are best able to grow in their faith, we, we can't just keep doing the same exact thing and replicating it, but instead need to think about what are the ways we can get all of those different people to have a touch point, all of those people connected so that they actually have a shared experience, so that there's something shared to being a parish other than just going to mass together. Now, the other aspect when we think about a book is that, you know, in, in catechesis or in, in everything we do in our parishes, we can often be drawn to big ideas. Like, okay, it's the year of Eucharistic revival, so Eucharist, right? People should enter more deeply into the Eucharist and learn what the church teaches about Eucharist. I'm like, okay, that is great, but it's, an, it's very abstract. You know, it's hard for the average parent in the parish to hear that, to see that in the bulletin and have a concrete sense of, okay, well, this is what I can actually do to do that. So ideas, even our wonderful, you know, our doctrines of the church, they're inherently abstract in many ways until we offer something concrete as a way for people to enter more deeply. And so a book is inherently concrete. You know, it's always something that people can reach out and touch. They can know if they have the book. They can know if they're reading the book. So books have a concreteness to them that sometimes our best ideas and our best visions and our best aspirations don't necessarily have on their own. And when we think about, you know, getting to know people in a parish, small talk has its limits. You know, I, if you've ever gone to coffee and donuts at your parish and you could go for months and not have a conversation with somebody who, who's new, who you don't know, beyond, hi, how are you? Where do you live? Right? It's hard for us as modern day Americans to make that step into actually talking about the faith. A book, though, a book creates permission in a unique way. And I think a great analogy is thinking about fans of a sports team. Like if you've ever been to a football game or a Major League Baseball game, you'll see people outside who have that same team's t-shirt on. And they just start going up to each other and talking about it. You know, they can talk about so-and-so who's starting, how their stats are, how the season is going. There's a permission to start to talk because you're a fan of that team. So a book can do the same thing in the life of a parish or a large ministry or a Catholic school. A book gives people permission to have a conversation. So if everybody's been hearing from the parish that this is our parish book for, for Easter or Lent or for whatever particular month, then it's kind of an excuse to make conversation. Suddenly you can ask people, hey, hey, have you, have you picked up the book? Have you read any? What do you think? So it creates a space where people have a common ground that doesn't seem judgmental, right? Um, because the parish has been encouraging reading this book. So if I'm asking somebody like, hey, ha have, you, have you gotten it? It doesn't seem like I'm you know, judging them on their faith life, the way it might be a little bit more awkward if I walked up to somebody and said, hey, I've been reading the letter to the Hebrews in my prayer life and it's really doing this, you know, like they could receive that as like, oh, are you, are you saying I should? Are you saying I'm not a good Christian because I'm not? A book creates a more neutral ground for that permission. And the, the, the use of books in book clubs is definitely something that has been successful in our modern Catholic setting. So Joe Paprocki, who has written for decades the Catechist Journey, he has seen that book clubs absolutely can have a sense of community and help people grow in the faith. A much more recent example, if you've heard of the ministry, Well-Read Mom, and there's a wonderful um, new book from the founders, 
Well-Read Mom is a very recent ministry started in the past decade around this idea that people had a desire to be having conversations about, you know, really important subjects and books became a way to help them do that. So while the um, idea of big community reads is something we certainly see in secular libraries and universities, there's also smaller examples in our modern Catholic culture. Okay, so now let's talk about the steps to go through in terms of planning. You know, the first thing really is to get, gather the people who are gonna plan this for your ministry, for your parish, and it should absolutely be a team. Why? Because the idea is that with a book, you can engage many different styles. You can engage the introverts, you can engage people who want a group to go to, you can engage people who don't have time to ever go to a group. But to understand those different people, you're gonna need a team. So whether you're a staff member or a key volunteer, make sure you get a team. And then the first thing is to discern what is it that the Lord wants you to lead your parish in? You know, what is the catechetical need? And probably the most important thing here is to keep it focused, right? There can be a temptation to say, oh, our parish is filled with, you know, a generation of people who didn't have good catechesis, blah, blah, blah. So let's read the catechism. Now, the catechism is a, a wonderful book, but there's not a lot of focus there, right? There's too much in the catechism. So discern what do we want our focus to be? What do we want our focus to be? And that focus will guide you as you start to think about particular books. But start with a, a strong focus, you know, not a very general idea of, we just need to help people grow in the faith, right? Because that's not gonna help you um, discern the right book. Now, the next thing is once you kind of think about, okay, what is the catechetical need? What is the key piece of God's plan of salvation that our people right here, right now, in this coming season, um, need to enter more deeply into? The next step is, you know, to start thinking about those possible books. So the number one thing is it should meet that catechetical need. But beyond that, there are some other practical things to think about. So one would be the availability of the book that you want to use. Is it, is it in print? Can you buy it at an affordable price? Um, how will you actually get it? You know, is there a local Catholic bookstore that might want to order it in bulk? Is there a publisher you can order it in bulk from? Thinking about, you know, that book, what different formats is it offered in that are gonna be important to our community, right? So we have paper printed books, audio books, digital books, but what's available for this particular book? You might also want to think about, do we have ministry partners or even the author of that book that we would like to try to tie in to this initiative? You know, is that important for us? Because that might guide you in what books you might consider on your brainstorm list. Um, and then finally, you know, what about this book would interest and attract people? Is it because it's something they've never done before and it's gonna help them do that? Is, because, is it because it's of a, about a topic that's really, really relevant that people's felt needs are guiding them toward? But what's gonna make this attractive? So those factors should be in your head as you as a team develop a brainstorming list. Okay, the next step, once you have a book selected, is to really think about the touch points. And this is what makes doing a one parish, one book initiative so unique, that there are so many ways that you can engage people and encourage them to connect around a book, and the ways are so decentralized. So unlike most adult faith formation that we seek to do in parish life, that's often pretty centralized. You know, maybe we bring everybody together in a big group and split them up into the tables, but that's about as decentralized as it gets. A book can be very decentralized. So as you think, what are the formats that people in my parish uh, have enjoyed in the past? And what might bring the other three-fourths of people, right? The people who are not part of the 23%, the other three-fourths, what might bring them in? So we have things like small groups that can be done anywhere, both in the parish and at home, big events, 
that can have a talk from somebody who's a relevant speaker related to the subject, but then also things like opportunities for people to share their own reflections to particular prompts that you might give for sections of a book, and people could share them in the bulletin, in digital media. Um, they could be invited to give announcements at the end of mass to share that, but there's ways to um, offer people that opportunity to share what their re responses to certain parts of the book, especially the parts that are important for your catechetical plan. And as you engage people in those concrete ways of sharing, it invites more, you know, so expect more people to come forward and you want to be able to give them that opportunity. Books can have connections to your liturgical life. So tie-ins to homilies of your priests or deacons, tie-ins to the music. And you can also think about, you know, how can this book integrate into some existing ministries that we already have? Like most parishes have a children's catechetical program. So what about this book can connect there so that even kids can feel um, included? Now, the other part of planning, when you're not just thinking about touch points, is to think about the support plan. So this is going to be the more um, logistical, more practical stuff. Like, how are we going to train some of the people who are going to be involved in this? What type of means of communication are we going to use? If your parish has a communications coordinator, they should absolutely be part of your team. Um, and then during this, uh, this planning time, I would strongly encourage you to think of what are some of the ways we're going to assess this, this one parish, one book initiative? Because, you know, one initiative that spans one month or one season, it can't move the needle on everything that you would desire in your parish life. But it can move the needle on something or maybe two things. So think about that. You know, what are your highest priorities that you could potentially track? to actually see how are we doing? And it's a great thing to start tracking because um, if, if you see fruit and do this again in multiple seasons or multiple years, then you can actually look at, hey, are we achieving what we wanna do? So if it's bringing people who've never done uh, an in-person adult faith formation event in, well then keep track of it. And then you can see how uh, God is bringing fruit to what you're doing and, and how you're praying, but then also see places to improve. So never neglect that piece of planning. And then the fun step, when you actually get to do it, then you know after doing it, it's the time to start the cycle again. Reflect on what worked, discern, hey, you know, maybe understanding the part of God's plan of salvation that we looked at has led to something natural. And we already have the idea of when to do this next, but to start thinking toward the future. Now I'm gonna circle back to step one, because I think this is the place where we can often get derailed or just not know where to go. So when we think about choosing a book, the goal here is catechesis. The goal here is even more specific evangelizing catechesis because we know that so many people in our parishes maybe don't have a sense of what that good news is and we want to evangelize them through that lifelong growth in the faith. So as I mentioned before, don't aim too broadly, right? It's really hard to help someone grow in every area of their life at once. So prayerfully discern as a team, you know, where is the Lord calling up? Us to grow in this particular season. I would encourage you to, you know, stick to stuff that's very solidly within the deposit of faith. And so by that, I mean, you know, not going into private revelation or things that are really preferential or one person's opinion within the church, right? Because, you know, the church is this wonderful pastor of orthodoxy and there's a fence of what's orthodox and not. And people can be in many different places inside that pasture. So we wanna pick something that's firmly inside that pasture so that people don't feel excluded or don't feel like you're pushing something that's just someone's opinion onto them. Finally, always consider you know, how this is not just a book club. 
because you know a book club is really centered on the book and the reading of books. But as we do this in, in parish life, this is just a tool for evangelizing catechesis. So to always keep that in mind. And to finally, you know, don't think that we have to be too creative, right? And go with the latest and greatest super popular Catholic modern book title. It's, it's kind of funny if you think about us as Christian believers coming from our Judeo-Christian heritage, we have always been people who have gathered as one around books. And those have been the books of the, of the sacred scriptures. And those books are still available. Some of them are very short. Some of them are ones that have a lot of intrigue that people don't know very much about. And they certainly can be attained often very cheaply. So don't you know, pass by books of the Bible too quickly because those can be an incredible way to bring unity. Because if, you know, if there's anything that Christians and Catholics agree on, you know, it's that the Bible is this uniquely inspired book. And that inspiration is the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so you can really invite people in, how is the Spirit moving today in these words of Scripture? Now, in thinking about discerning, um, I mentioned that you should think about other ministries, other partners, other resources that can help. And so two, especially to highlight. So one is Ave Maria Press. You're here on one of these wonderful professional development webinars. They also have companion kits. Companion kits come with some of that concrete communications material for your parish. They also have a collection of free small group downloads. So as you think about catechetical topics, if you're looking at the Ave Maria Press website, you can download for free some of those small group resources, which perusing them is a great way to think about um, if a particular book will really help the, the catechetical need of your community. And then finally, I myself, I am from catholicbiblicalschool.org. And we exist to provide resources to Catholic parishes on every single book of the Bible. So we have background, discussion guides, and we have the tools to help you use any book as part of a One Parish, One Book initiative. And as part of that, we published our first book called Simply Scripture, which is a day-by-day -day accompaniment to reading a Bible. So a book like that or many other books that support reading the Bible can be a book paired with a book with the Bible of the Bible um, to help bring your parish deeper in the faith. Okay, so that's the basic overview of being inspired by taking an idea that we see happening in the secular world all the time and using that as a tool so that we can evangelize and catechize, especially those people in our parishes who are not showing up for our traditional programming. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Erin for questions and discussions today. Yes, thank you so much, Colleen. Um, I invite all of you to send in a question or a comment for Colleen. Um, maybe you've hit a roadblock in, in some area in your parish ministry or need some troubleshooting ideas. I'm sure that Colleen can help with that. Or let us know things that have really worked for you, what have been successful. So Colleen, one of the, the questions I wanna ask is how do we go about getting people motivated to show up, to participate? It's a great question. And, you know, one of the good things about a one book initiative, nobody has to show up. So there's ways to participate without showing up, which is sometimes a huge barrier, right? And picking a particular day and night of the week, you know, there's no perfect night. So this is where that team and especially who does the communications is going to be so important because as an initiative like this approaches, you want to shout it from the rooftop. So every mean of communication that you have in your parish. Um, so hearing about it in homilies leading up to the book initiative, announcements at mass, testimonies from maybe some people on your team who read the book in advance, putting stuff in print, putting stuff in digits, doing handouts from mass. You know, one of the most wonderful handouts you could give is a bookmark, right? because that can invite people, remind people into that book. 
um, the process of distributing a book in a parish can also be a way to catch people's attention. So whether you're able, if it's a book that you're able to give for free or that you're able to sell at a discount um, after parish events. So I would say the way to engage people is to just get the word out in every communication method you have. And the unity of those methods um, also can kind of just show how much this is an initiative of us all coming together. And one final tool, and this is a tool, especially when we think about those 75%, you know, the 75% of people who don't come to adult faith formation events, hopefully many of them are coming to mass. So if they come to mass, they'll find out about it. But we know that they are not all coming to mass too. So things like zip code based direct mail uh, into your parish database can be a way to pretty efficiently um, get the word out to those people who maybe aren't picking up the bulletin because they're not there. And maybe this isn't gonna get them to show up necessarily, but it might get them to go buy the book and read what other people on your parish are saying, you know, in a parish Facebook group or something like that. So mm -hmm. it can be a small touch point on their journey back into that parish community or into it for the first time. Mm -hmm. I like that idea too of really emphasizing like participation is varied and different for everyone, right? For some, it might be showing up at a small group meeting, but for others, it's just reading the book, you know, and, and maybe having a conversation about it too with someone. I know parishes that will often distribute on Christmas, at Christmas mass, because that's when, you know, some who aren't there regularly would be there. And so that's another touch point or invitation Okay, I got some questions here. Um, what would be a good book to start with? Someone has asked. Oh, I mean, <laughs> we're talking to, there's a publisher, there's a publisher representative right here. So talk about an extra, an, uh, you know, an expert in good books. Okay, so the first thing I'd say is think less first about the book and more about what is the, what is the part of God's plan of salvation that people really need to know? You know, because that's going to then drive, okay, what kind of book do I go find? I think we do it wrong when we just look at a page of books and say, okay, this is a bestseller. Let's choose this. You know, that might not be right for your community. So get that team of people together and pray about where is it that our people need to be fed, need to have hope, need to be encouraged, maybe need to hear the good news of Jesus Christ for the first time. So I would say start with that, to that, to that felt need. Um, Beyond that, like I said, I would stay away from books that are just too big in, you know, so I'll say, so Ave Maria Press right now, you know, they've got a great book that overviews the catechism. That, mm -hmm. that might not be a great choice because it's just too big. It's too big of a thing, too many different ideas. So go for focus. You know, if you, um, if you want people to learn more about daily prayer, well, then do a book that is going to give them a practical experience of daily prayer, right? Because reading about the catechism, awesome as that might be, isn't necessarily going to do that. So I'd say, um, and I can say this personally, I mean, sometimes we just aim so big in our dreams in parish life. You know, like been on parish staff, man, we want to conquer the world all right now. Mm -hmm. But in reality, we can help people maybe build one habit or learn one thing new that's going to start a series of transformative events. And we can do that best with focus. Um, so, I mean, on the Ave Maria webpage, if you look at the books that they've picked for some of those free small group guides, that can be a wonderful indication of books that other parishes have found really valuable for one book um, initiatives, if you look at some of their companion kits. And then I think we so often overlook the Bible. You know, it's a book that is readily accessible. Most Catholics are a little bit afraid to read it or don't feel like they get a lot out of it. And it is the inspired word of God. So there's a special promise there with the Bible that no other book has. So those are just some starting point suggestions. Oh, yeah, great ideas. Um, here's another question. I know this is for parishes, she starts with, but if you have any additional tips and tricks for Catholic schools, 
at our school, we're on year three of One Book, One School and are looking how to make the program more cohesive and engaging. Oh, I so I love that you're a school that's doing this idea. Mm -hmm. Kind of mentioned that on the title slide and I'm a parent of um, two of our kids go to a Catholic K-8 school and man, I, I guess I'll say this publicly, I wish I actually knew you know, more of the parents better at a deeper level than the pickup line. So just huge um, round of applause for making that effort in your school. So the question was, how do we make it more cohesive, cohesive and engaging? Mm. I think engaging comes from having multiple ways to connect and share about the book. Um, and Sometimes people do that in person. You know, sometimes people could be set up with like a, ver like a micro group, like three or four groups of people. I think things like discussion questions that you can share at the dinner table with your kids mm -hmm. can be really powerful. Um, we often forget, you know, when we say small groups in parish ministry, we automatically think adults. I think for those of us who are parents, our small group is our family. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a handful of people who are spending time together and it's a great opportunity for some of those questions. Thinking of schools, I'd also add most of the demographic of your parents is going to be um, young enough that they're pretty familiar with a lot of digital tools and they're short on time. So I think things like private Facebook groups, ways to quickly share what you're feeling or thinking to a particular prompt or a particular chapter or a particular verse of the Bible online can be so beneficial for parents of school aged children because I, mean, I can testify, we're in like the busy season of life. So I think quick ways of sh to share can also be really important for that group. Great, great ideas. Another one, if a book club is done for a young adult group, how many times would be good to meet up to discuss book topics and still maintain the attention and intrigue of young adults? Oh, okay. <laughs> so I think the key is to, and this is the strength of a book, is to offer different pathways. So you can offer something, it sounded like maybe the person was thinking weekly, for people, for young adults who maybe want to connect after a particular mass, you know, if there's one mass that based on the times in your parish happens to have more than young adults, that, that's often the case. Mm -hmm. They could connect before or after that. But to again, not discount, if we say the 75% of young adults don't go to parish faith formation events, don't forget the 75%. And what hope could you have for them? what form of engagement could you have for them? Um, there is a wonderful, there's a ministry in South, it happens to be in South Bend, Indiana that I'm not connected to, but I've seen their stuff online and it's called A Blaze and it's for young adults. And they have different young adults share their reflection on the Sunday readings um, and then they put it online. And so for young adults engaging with a particular book, Maybe somebody never goes to a group, but they reply to you who's the coordinator to a particular prompt and say, yes, I'm willing to have that shared on social media. You know, that's a way that they are enriching the faith of others and connecting to others. So it might not seem as, you know, um, satisfying as seeing 200 young adults in a room together, but we can connect with people in those, um, softer ways and think of that as a as a bridge that might slowly build them into coming to a week-long event or a weekly event yes the the person who asked the question of who is in the school and they're on year three of one book one school wrote this thank you so much for these ideas my takeaway is to offer a variety of opportunities across different platforms digital in person etc for our parents to engage with the text. Thanks so much. That's Wonderful. such a great summary. And I would encourage everybody, look to our secular um, organizations who put a ton into this. So if you look at your local secular bookstore, they probably do stuff like this. And you know, we should copy good ideas. 
from the secular world. So I know my library system do here does a big read. And so looking at what they do, you know, we can learn techniques and tools from the secular world. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And I wondered too, if little companion videos would be another touch point. Yes, and um, Ave Maria Press does those and many other Catholic publishers right. do the same thing. That's something the CatholicBiblicalSchool.org, we have that for every single book of the Bible. And again, that's another example of how you, we can use multimedia to lead people into a book and then lead them to conversation, whether that conversation is digital or in person. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, Colleen, this has been so helpful, so informative. Um, and one of my takeaways is the small group is the family, you know, and to, to think of that. Be. It can be. <laughs> Not just, but it, it's another group. Yes. So so thank you for that. So tell us a little bit about Simply Scripture for Lent and Easter. Ah, so if, if you gave a really um, appropriate lead in, Erin. <laughs> so this book actually came from our family. Um, our oldest two kids are currently nine and 11, and we've got two younger ones below them. This book emerged from our family reading the Gospel of Mark together as our family one book, one read. Mm. And we were inspired to do that in December of 2020. If you remember back then, that was like pandemic winter, who's doing anything? And um, our diocese had actually promoted um, a Bible reading plan. And we looked at it and we were like, man, we're never going to be able to read that much or keep the kids' attention that much. But what if we just picked one book and did it as slow as we needed to and had this little family small group? Um, and then four years later, through the Living the Word um, Women's Bible, that actually, this actually grew into this book. And so this book is the perfect resource for doing a one book initiative around the Gospel of Mark and Acts of the Apostles because it breaks down the reading into days for your participants. It's spread out over 100 days total. So it's not a challenging reading pace. You know, it's not a fire hose pace. It's um, a good pace, which again, if you're picking a one book for a parish, don't pick a 900 page book. No. Probably not a great idea. Yeah. So it breaks those books of the Bible down into day by day readings. It provides a little bit of background that goes with every day. And then it provides discussion and prayer prompts. And we also have some little companion videos that go to different parts of it. So uh, this book very much emerged as um, post-it notes and index cards from the trenches that eventually got collected into a book. Love it. Wonderful. It was actually originally written as post-it notes. Yeah. <laughs> You're not kidding. No, I have them. <laughs> Yeah. Well, thank you so much. You know, if you're interested in checking out this book, we offer you 15% off when ordering at Ave Maria Press webinar 1022 using that promo code. And, you know, Colleen, you were very nice to talk about our companion kits and, and some of our other bulk rate books. If you, if any of you have any questions about these, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'd like to share the resources with you, or again, we want to support our parishes. And um, so this is one of the ways that we can do that. So I am here at your disposal for, for any resource or help you might need. Um, so, so thank you. Thank you for joining us this week. Share this recording with the colleagues that you work with in your parish or your school or your family. Um, and join us next week with Father Joe Laramie. He's going to talk about his, his passion, the, the devotion to the Sacred Heart, and how teachers and catechists can help their students deepen their faith um, in this devotion. He's going to offer you a practical steps, a special monthly lesson plan um, that aligns with the Sacred Heart, but also with the Holy Father's monthly intentions. So please join us next week for that. Um, and Colleen, once again, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your passion and all of your experience with us. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you thank to everybody. You. Thank you to everybody who's on with us. See you next week. Bye-bye.